بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلا آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد the truth or the حق is with اہل السنہ with اہل السنتی والجمعہ and اہل السنہ what do we mean by اہل السنتی والجمعہ we mean those people who adhere to the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the sahaba radhi Allah ta'ala anhu majma'in to the best of their ability and this is in their aqidah in their creed in their minhaj in their methodology for understanding their religion and their methodology for giving da'wah and their mannerisms their adab their akhlaq the way they treat one another and their fiqh their understanding or the way they practice the Islamic jurisprudence this is what we mean by those people follow Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah or those people who are a part of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah and with that being said it's imperative for us to know that Ahl Sunnah as the group meaning the group that follows the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, the people of the Sunnah and the Jama'ah the main body of Muslims that they are one and that they strive to avoid innovation in the religion and that the belief the creed of Ahl Sunnah is the truth and there is no doubt about that and the fiqh of Ahl Sunnah is the truth and there is no doubt about that and the methodology and minhaj of Ahl Sunnah is the truth and there is no doubt about that and the mannerisms, because their mannerisms come from the Qur'an and come from the Sunnah of the Prophet so they're the truth and there's no doubt about that. However, what's imperative for us to understand is that a person from Ahl Sunnah or individuals from Ahl Sunnah can fall into mistakes which go against the Sunnah of the Prophet although they're from Ahl Sunnah. And why do we know this? Aside from just what we see in reality, going back to the Rasuls, the Prophet said, All the children of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of those are those who repent. Repent to Allah, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, feel sorry or sorrow for what they have done, and come back to Allah and seek forgiveness and strive to remove themselves from that sin or that bid'ah or that act of kufr or shirk or whatever they fell into. This is the case of Ahl Sunnah. And you'll find those from Ahl Sunnah who make mistakes and don't represent the Sunnah. Either it could be in their mannerisms, they could be very harsh with the people, or they could be too easy and not commanding to the good and not forbidding the evil. They can fall into all kinds of sins because they're human beings. They're the children of Adam. They were created in toil and they were created to struggle and they were created with imperfection. The perfection of Kamal is for Allah to Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth. So it's imperative that when we look at individuals and they consider themselves from Ahl Sunnah or they are from Ahl Sunnah, that's two different messiahs right there, two different issues. Firstly, the person who considers himself from Ahl Sunnah may or may not be from Ahl Sunnah. Meaning, as the scholars say, Al Ibra bi Haqqaiq laysa bi Musammiyat. That the proof of something is in, is in not in what it's not its name, but in rather rather in its substance. So, for example, someone could call himself from Ahl Sunnah. Or they could call themselves Salafi, or they could call themselves from Ahl Athar, or Ahl Sunnah Ibn Jama'ah. And all those names are permissible and they're all one. They all mean the same. Meaning that they adhere to 
the Salaf Asari, the Ridwan Allah, the understanding of the Sahaba, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so a person can call themselves that, but the proof is in what they practice. Are they extreme in their understanding of takfir? Do they call other Muslims to be apostates without the right to do so, without the dawabit, the, the criterion, without the shuru, the conditions, without the mulana, the, those things which prohibit a person from making takfir? Though that is what is the proof. If they don't follow Ahl Sunnah in, in, in this issue, in the, in the minhaj, follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, follow those ahadith, which illustrate for us the seriousness of this, this uh, aspect of creed, of calling, considering someone a Muslim or not, call, taking someone out of the fold of Islam. If they don't follow the correct methodology, then they're not from Ahl Sunnah. Because this is an important usul of Ahl Sunnah. However, a scholar from Ahl Sunnah, or a person from Ahl Sunnah, can make a mistake in that. But we're talking about people whose usul, their foundation, is not in the foundation of Ahl Sunnah. So, because they consider themselves Ahl Sunnah, that does not make them Ahl Sunnah. Or, for example, a person who has extremeness by going beyond the bounds in the worship. Meaning, not that they worship a lot too much, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that they go against the established religious principles by innovating in the religion. For example, you have some people, they say we want to seek refuge in the dead, or we supplicate to the dead, or they make tawaf, they circumambulate around graves. This is going beyond the limits in ibadah, in worship. So although they consider themselves Ahl Sunnah, you find the Diobandis, the Naqshbandi, the Naqshbandi sect, as well, and many other Sufi sects, you have the Jamaat al Akbash, they also consider themselves uh, from Ahl Sunnah. But the fact that they call themselves Naqshbandis, uh, uh, you know, the Jamaat al Akbash, or the Habashis, or they call themselves uh, those other Sufi Turuk, that shows us they've already given themselves a name outside of Ahl Sunnah that doesn't go back to the Sunnah, it doesn't go back to the Quran, it doesn't go back to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor does it go back to the Salaf Asari of the Sunnah, Radhi Allah Ta'ala Ibrahim. So they've already excluded themselves from Ahl Sunnah, even though they consider themselves from Ahl Sunnah, and even though they may take fear of Ahl Sunnah, and they hate Ahl Sunnah, and they call Ahl Sunnah, uh, the people of Ahl Sunnah, to be innovators. So this is a case of the Basically, the uh, the tortoise calling the rabbit slow, so to speak. I can't think of another uh, analogy, but it shows us the important point that we want to mention here is that the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. That it isn't what you call yourself, but it's what you practice and what you and how you understand the religion of Islam. That's what makes a person a, uh, a person from Ahl Sunnah their practice and their creed and understanding of the religion and their Tao. And the other person that we want to dis discuss is the person from Ahl Sunnah who, who makes a mistake. Who makes a mistake which goes against the Sunnah. And as we mentioned in the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that can happen to any of us. Any of us can make a mistake and lead the Sunnah. We can be on the Sunnah and then we'll lead the Sunnah. Or a person can be from Ahl Bidah and they can come to the Sunnah. This is just the Sunnah of the law. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. That we can sometimes be guided and sometimes misguided. We can fall into innovation and we can come to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can leave Kufr to come to Tawheed. And leave Shirk to come to Tawheed. Leave Kufr to come to Iman. This is the Sunnah of the law. And the narrow of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he blesses us with Hidayah. Rabbana la tuzulubana badahi.
fact, that falls on the individual. And that's what's imperative for us as Muslims, to understand that a person can be with guidance or a person can be on misguidance. And it isn't in just a name, but it's in your practice. It's in your understanding. It's in your methodology. That's why it's imperative for us to understand the religion, to strive to remove the ignorance from ourselves. As the Prophet ﷺ said, whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. That understanding of the religion is going to tell you and encourage you to practice the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And it's going to keep you away from innovation. And it's going to keep you away from shirk and kufr. Because you have a fiqh fi deen. At least you're going to know how to deal with those issues. You're going to know how to come back to the sunnah if you fall astray. You're going to have the tools to be able to discern between truth and falsehood. This is the ni'mah of fiqh fi deen. This is what we ask Allah to bless us with. We need this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana fi al-akhirati 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 h